The year was 1132, and for 13 Benedictine monks from York, life at St Mary's Abbey was becoming too rowdy and extravagant. Growing tired of their current lifestyles, the monks chose to escape York and find somewhere new to live a simpler life. They chose to settle at fountains. Enduring extremely cold and bitter winters, the first few years here were quite a challenge for the founding monks. The 13 monks faced famine, and one of the only methods of shelter here was a large elm tree, until the year 1135 when the construction of Fountains Abbey began. Beginning as a wooden structure, Fountains Abbey was later rebuilt in stone, and by the mid-1400s, the completion of the Abbey and its surrounding buildings were well underway. But, in 1146, the abbey was attacked and destroyed beyond repair, and had to be rebuilt. By the 13th century, the grandness of Fountains Abbey outshone many other England churches and prospered. But harsh times at the abbey lay ahead. During the 14th century, Scotland invaded Northern England, demanding large amounts of taxes. And then in 1348, many of Yorkshire's population were struck down by the Black Death. Already struggling financially, the Abbey's huge loss of workers and productivity during the plague outbreak resulted in great losses of income. By the 15th century, life at Fountains Abbey seemed to have recovered from its hardships until the dissolution of England's monasteries. And in 1549, the abbot of Fountains Abbey along with its prior and monks, were each given pensions and sent away. And the doors here were closed for good. Throughout the years, much of the abbey was stripped down. And by the year 1597, it became the possession of Sir Stephen Proctor who went on to build his own grand hall here, using stonework from the abbey, naming it Fountains Hall. The remaining ruins of Fountains Abbey are the largest monastic ruins in England, belonging to the National Trust since 1983. The abbey ruins remain one of Britain's most popular tourist destinations for those wishing to take a step back in time to a bygone era. For many years, visitors at Fountains Abbey have reported some unexplainable phenomena within the Abbey ruins. The eerie sounds of a ghostly choir has been heard along 
with chanting echoes within the Abbey's Chapel of Nine Altars. But more ghostly encounters have been witnessed at nearby Fountains Hall, where throughout the years there have been several unexplainable ghost sightings. It is believed that the daughter of Sir Stephen Proctor, the builder of Fountains Hall, is regularly haunting the hall. Her spirit believed to be trapped here for eternity. Emerging from the wooden panelling in the main hall is the spirit of an Elizabethan man intent on making his presence known. Visitors walking along the corridors have been left terrified when an invisible entity seemed to run towards them and brushed past them as they walked down towards the main part of the hall. The main staircase is believed to be haunted by two children. Their voices are often heard as if they are playing on the staircase. Eerie creaking, travelling up and down the stairs, has been heard by many throughout the years, along with the unexplainable sounds of rainfall when in fact the sun is shining. Sightings of a ghostly hound and the apparition of a mysterious dark figure carrying a glowing candle has been reported by occupants staying in one of the first floor bedrooms. More unexplainable sightings of a similar spirit known here as the Shining Golden Lady has been spotted many times within the same room but only by young children. It is believed that the Shining Golden Lady would appear to young children living here at a time when they were feeling unwell. The Golden Lady would sit by the poorly children, comforting them by stroking their hair, but then she just simply vanishes. The mysterious sounds of a singing lady accompanied by the sound of musicians who seem to be rehearsing a piece of music are often heard through the walls of the Great Hall. Both the music and singing lady can be heard several times as they practice to perfection. But as soon as the main door to the Great Hall is opened, all here fall silent and the music mysteriously stops. <laughs> 